Welcome this morning to Living Truth Fellowship, and uh, we we are here to for our Life Sunday, and um, we are just excited to share with you. This is uh, most of our group are missing too. Um, what we experienced during the amazing week that we had in Kansas City, and I just want to thank you because. We know that you love these kids, and we know that because you supported them to get there. Um, we all love these kids, and we're with them weekly, but to have that financial and prayer support from you guys just meant the world to us, and we know because of that, because of you guys, these eight kids and three adults because we experienced exactly what they experienced had an awesome week experiencing God with 6,000 other teenagers in a place where we could be who we are we could be followers of a Christ we talk about this a lot in youth group that it's hard to go to school or to go to work or to be with friends and to be followers of Christ, even though that's what we want to do. We want to show that to the world, but it's hard. And there you just can be a follower of Christ with 6,000 other teenagers. And so we thank you for that, first and foremost. And again, as we go, we're going to show you some more clips, some more pictures that we took, the fun that we had. Um, going to life was something I've... I'm sure none of us ever, ex maybe Carter, but none of us we've ever experienced before because we live in a life where God and, and Christ and Christians are constantly persecuted at school and everything. Like, it's just not something talked about or whatever, but we get to go in this atmosphere for five days where we're surrounded by thousands of other people who are just close with God, close with Christ, and just have this loving and joy and everything. And... <laughs> It's just really amazing. This is an interesting story, actually. Those two, that's Josiah and Matthias, they're two kids. We grew up together till I was like five back in Ohio. And um, yeah, so we were close friends and then we moved away, obviously. And it just so happened that we stayed in the same hotel. And on the first day waiting for the bus, we just saw them. So I got to sit, I sat with Josiah and talked with him on the bus on the way there. And we talked about sports and how high school's going and stuff. That just blew me away. Yeah. But, yeah, it was a really neat experience to be with a bunch of people who are just Jesus lovers, and we can all just be who we are and not have to worry about holding back at all. So, yeah. Oh, and so we went to a lot of seminars throughout. Like, there would be... We get up, we'd have like main stage, and then you can, seminars were sort of optional, but we went to all, except for the last day, we went to a seminar every time, but um, my favorite seminar, and I think Carter and Logan's, and probably anybody that went, all the guys that went, was the spiritual warfare seminar with this guy, and he was just awesome. Yeah, we really packed it into the room. Yeah. So, you'll see him in a second. So that guy, he was a missionary in Africa, was it? So he grew up a missionary in Africa and everything, and he's talking about all these experiences he's had with spiritual warfare and, like, dealing with different spirits and people that have, like, what do you call it, demonizations and stuff, like things that he's dealt with or things that he's seen. And a lot of the stories are really amazing and hard to hard to grasp and hard to believe because it's just not not stuff we see but that was my favorite summer because like by the end he's just screaming into the mic and like like we are warriors and like stuff like that and everybody was right there with him ready to go and just it was loud and rowdy and fun and yeah so that's why I like that one um we went to a seminar called Do Climbing Out of Black Hole Depression, and it was just like tips on how you can like overcome depression and 
we learned that like depression is like a feeling that you have and one of five teens deal with depression and personal like a personal relationship with God can like help you come over with like help you get over depression and was it a girl I think who was doing it she was like talking about how like and then she gave us all these scriptures of how to get over depression and how to help people through it and one of the verses that she told us was Genesis 50:20 you tried to harm me, but God has made it turn out for the best, so that could save all these people as he is doing now. The, now, like, uh, the transportation from the hotel to get to the seminar at life was, or <laughs> it was like they had, a, like, five coach buses and sometimes two, and so you'd stand in, like, these really long lines waiting for to get on the bus. And sometimes we'd like be in line for like half an hour. And then it'd be raining one day. It was raining when we were trying to wait in line. So we had to like stand under like the shelter kind of thing by the hotel. And then we'd meet a ton of new people. This was us on a bus. It was like packed and these girls were standing there. So they sat, or Rachel was on my lap and then the two girls sat right next to us. And so that was cool. And we met a lot of new people standing in line and like waiting for everyone. And then the weather was hot and humid. And yeah, we had, after our um, service project, we were all super hot. And we had to wait in line for uh, the bus. And we all just were like, we didn't want to wait because we were hot and sweaty and we had to be back there. And so we all, so we took the tr um, tram to get there because it was, we, wanted to shower, and so, yeah. Okay, so for the main stages, where ma main sessions, at first, I, he's kind of close. <laughs> um, when I first got there, I was thinking, this is probably just gonna be a bigger version of church, but after I got up there and saw all the crazy, the big stage, the lasers, the lights everywhere, and smoke, smoke machines. It just, it was crazy, because it was different than what I thought it was going to be. And we had all of this crazy, like there was a DJ too, and a, like everyone was like jumping up and down and like having a good time. And... We had a bunch of uh, fun and cool speakers as well with that. We had like, um, we had Francis Chan, with, who is my favorite, and we had a bunch of other people, like other, other than speakers too. We had like poets and uh, magicians and, um, oh, the MC guys. And there was someone else, the guitar player, guitar player. And they each um, showed us about God, even doing, like, their magician shows and their guitar playing and st stuff like that. And it was really awesome, not what I expected at all. All right, so I'm – so the worship – so we, like Heidi said earlier, we worship every, we had two sessions, we worship in the morning and then later in the day, and yep, Jordan Howardson band, that's most of them, and they were doing all our music, doing their songs, doing a couple other songs that we do here and everything, and it's just, it was so amazing to have, I, it's, it, it's almost impossible to describe what it's like, thousands of young followers just reaching for God and singing at the top of their lungs and just just worshiping it's just it's just really amazing and it's loud and like there were times where we like everybody be dancing and jumping and like 
the concrete floor, you swear, was going to bust. Like, it was crazy. The whole room is moving. I mean, it's one giant. It's like we're closed in, and there's 6,000 people just screaming, yelling, and stuff, and it was just amazing. All right, uh, service project. So, yeah, when we got there the first day, um, they handed out, like, wristbands and stuff, and you had to, like, show them, like, to the security guards, like, get into the conference center and stuff. And those wristbands were, like, different colors, so all we all had green. And those wristbands, you know, decided, like, what day you would be doing a service project. So uh, I think blue was first day, Orange was the second day, and we were last on Friday. And yeah, we uh, so we had lunch, and then afterwards we would um, line up outside the con uh, convention center, and they would have they would have like th they had like 30 school buses, and we got on there and drove down to a neighborhood, and. Um, in uh, Kansas City, and um, we, for our service project, we cleaned up trash around a neighborhood. Um, I, don't, I don't know what other, other groups did before us. Um, I think they were like doing, yeah, doing some gardening and stuff, but basically we just um, walked around the streets and um, with garbage bags and picked up trash and stuff, so that was, that was fun. It was it was pretty hot and really hot. So. Uh, what, what else? So then for one of the days, uh, we decided we wanted to go to this museum that had uh, body worlds, and it was kind of, they showed uh, what the, the human body is like, and it was kind of creepy, but it was interesting to see uh, what, it, what, like, what is underneath your skin and how God created us and how amazing our body is, and that it's just all our blood veins and everything about us is unique about us and it was just amazing seeing what it was like yeah and they're all real people and none of it's fake it's all real and that which is really the creepiest part is because it's all real <laughs> and so it was very interesting to see what it was like uh what the how the body works and uh, it was very interesting. They had, uh, they also had um, a section of lungs, and it showed you the uh, smoker's lungs and then uh, uh, healthy lungs, and it was just gross, kind of seeing what it looked like and that stuff. And then uh, they, they, everything there was really neat, and it was really fun. Some people liked it, some people didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Carter really liked it. <laughs> Carter, I think one of Carter's statements was, this is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so then for our traveling, we took uh, Mike Niemeyer's van, which was really nice. So it, was, it was a good ride. It, it, it felt really long, but it was a very quiet ride. We all had our headphones on. And we're watching something, and 
The girls mostly took naps, it seems, so. And it was Rachel's birthday on the way up there, so Heidi put a bunch of balloons and stuff in there for uh, her birthday. And But it was a very interesting uh, ride there. And yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. But, yeah, we stopped at uh, Rizzoli, Riz, what is it? Fazoli's. Fazoli's, which uh, Jake and Pastor Greg like, and I, I, I thought it was okay, but they really like it. The breadsticks were good. Oh, and then we went, to, on the way back, we went to uh, Burger King, and they had these Cheetos, which, like, Mac and Cheetos, where it's like, mac and cheese like deep fried in uh cheeto like ground up cheeto like crushed up cheetos they're very interesting but they're actually pretty good and then uh yeah we went to am i going to talk about that or yeah I think okay so, so we went to another restaurant um fritz's uh what is it called yeah fritz's or whatever it was a uh, very interesting restaurant. I've never been to something like it. You, you go in, sit down, and you have a phone that you call your your you like call in your order, and then you like get your well, like you call in your order, and then once you get your order, it comes in by train. Okay. So there's like a train that comes by. So then you can see that there's like the basket underneath it. With uh, your food in it. And you're not sure if it's yours. Yeah, you, you have no idea if it's yours or not until it gets close to you. I got another video too here. Can I show it? There you go. Yeah, and then it just drops down to you. It was pretty good, cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It, and the food was actually, it was really good. It was really good. And the food wasn't really expensive either, which was nice. The burgers were really inexpensive, and it was a really good meal. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So I get to talk about the food. So, like, the first stop for food we made was actually, like, right after we left, and we stopped in McDonald's because Jake needed breakfast. <laughs> and then everybody got out and got breakfast. And then we also stopped at the Free Solis halfway to Kansas City somewhere in Iowa, which is, like, the only fast food Italian restaurant ever. It was really good, free breadsticks and everything. And then t at the convention, they served us lunch and dinner. And it was a big room, it's the same size as the one that the main stages were in. And there were some thousand tables that everybody sat in to eat. And they had a lot of different food, like hamburgers, tacos, sandwiches, and everybody got in lines. There were 17 lines with the same food at each of them. And yeah, Carter had a lot of fun stacking cups. <laughs> and then after we were done eating, the same room was a big game and yeah, games and different like blow up air things like obstacle courses and whatever that was you hit each other and yeah yeah that was hard you had to like stand on really yeah and then there were also uh, obstacle courses I wasn't very good at them but Jake thought he was pretty good until this <laughs> Until this uh, random person challenged him and finished in twice in half this time it took Jake. Yeah, it was really, really, really fast. And there, were, there was a lot of different stuff he could do up there in different like 
areas where you could play dodgeball and those things you got inside of them and there were giant balls and you went through a little track and tried to race each other by walking inside the ball. And that's one of the obstacle courses that Jake got burned on. This was a, a card game. They had games on the tables and stuff. And I saw this card game and I thought, wow, what a great game. Exploding kittens. I mean, fun for the whole family. Now you've heard all about how much fun everybody had. Um, a major portion of getting there is fundraising and donations. Um, for each student to go, it was approximately $900. And in order to raise that, um, the kids had done a pork fundraiser. And during the pork fundraiser, they, made, or they sold 438 pounds of pork and 122 bottles of sauce. And then other things they did, they worked the Easter breakfast, and we did the little M&M fundraiser. Um, but the biggest of all was you guys. I'm, you guys are the ones that made it, so they were able to go. We took eight kids, three adults, and you know, five days, you've got hotel, you've got travel and food. We did breakfast. They didn't provide breakfast, so we actually had breakfast in our hotel room and trying to budget through everything, but, um, but you guys are awesome. We just are so appreciative of everything you guys did. You guys just donated above and beyond, and. Um, all the kids got to go. I think only maybe one of them had to pay in at the end, and very minimal. You know, otherwise, seven out of the eight kids were completely funded through you know your donations. And we just really thank you for all your monetary donations and all of your prayers that you gave us and just all your support. So, thank you guys. We love you. It gets them out of their comfort zone a little bit to come and, and share and talk, but uh, we really wanted them to do that because we want you to hear, you know, not just about the fun. Of course, we had a lot, a lot of fun. It was, it was a great time. It was, uh, I have to say, I think for me, it was the most fun life I've ever been to. Um, and it, it was. It was really great. But there's a, a few things that I want to share with you uh, that, we, that we did with the kids each night. Um, after all the fanfare of the day and all the exciting things you saw, uh, the, the, the music and the, uh, the worship and the speakers and the seminars and all the different things that we would do, uh, by the end of the evening, they were pretty wiped out. And every night, we would all meet in one room when we get back to the hotel, and we'd sit down and we would talk for probably half hour, 45 minutes at least, and I would ask them the same four questions every night. And the first question I would ask them is, what did you learn about God today? I got some really neat, interesting answers. You know, God showed me this, God taught me that. I never understood this about God and about who He is. And the second question I would always ask is, what did you learn about yourself? And some of the things that they would share just was awesome things that God was speaking to their hearts and God was teaching them and God was leading them and God was helping them to grow and getting them to look at themselves and to look at their lives, to spend some time doing some self-examination, to spend some time seeking God as to what God would have for them. The third question I would ask every day is, what did you hate about today? Or what did you not like about today? Carter didn't like Body Worlds, the day we did Body Worlds, and there were always some things we didn't like. Uh, the first day we had dinner, we waited in line forever for dinner the first day, but then they got the bugs worked out, and it all ran a lot better, and there, there were different things that were not as pleasant, 
as other things, and as you do any trip, there's always going to be things that go wrong, and there's always going to be things that you have to be patient with and everything else. But it's interesting that when you're in a, a potentially stressful situation or a potentially uh, difficult situation, when you're surrounded by people who are all focused on Christ, it never gets there. It never becomes a problem. Everybody is able to relax. Everybody is able to be patient and deal with those things. A couple things I want to share with you. Um, uh, the first thing I want to share with you is something that the president of the CMA, John Stumbo, shared. And he had spoke uh, one night at the conference. And John is an outstanding speaker. And, you know, by far he was the oldest presenter who got up on stage. But he started talking. And in a room of over 6,000 teenagers, you could hear a pin drop because everybody wanted to hear what he had to say because he's just such a commanding speaker and such a passionate individual. And he has an amazing story of going through some unbelievable health issues where he almost died uh, in the last five years. But one of the things he shared uh, in that is he talked about when you go through the difficult times and you go through the down, down times and the hard times, he said that some of the important things that you need to do, and he said one of the most important things you need to do when you're struggling is to remain in community. And that was something I think that we all noticed that he said, which was huge. Because when we face challenges, when we face difficulties, when we're having a hard time as individuals, there are times where we just want to become a recluse or we want to hide, or we pull back from people. But that's when the church is the most valuable. And that is when the body of Christ really, really shines. When we face challenges and we face difficulties, but the key is we have to stay in community and allow people to minister to us. Another thing that I heard at one of the seminars, which I thought was outstanding, as he was talking uh, to these teenagers, this one gentleman was saying, that we have to make all of the decisions and the choices in life through a filter. And you choose two filters. One filter is the 15-second filter. Will this be good for me in the next 15 seconds? The other filter is the 15-year filter. Will this get me to where I want to be 15 years from now? The example he gave was dating. He said... Guys, where do you see yourself 15 years from now? Do you see yourself married 15 years from now? Do you see yourself married to a woman who has uh, saved herself for you? Do you see yourself married to a woman who uh, is all that you dreamed that she would be? Well, then that should affect your decision-making now when you date. As opposed to a 15-second decision, make it a 15-year decision. And it was one of those statements that really, I think, captured everybody in the room. One of the biggest things I shared with the kids, and I'll share this with you today, we heard a, a, an older uh, female missionary who was a missionary in Lebanon for years, um, and she was, a, she was ministering with Bonnie Witherall, if those of you who know who Bonnie Witherall was, uh, back in the early, early 2000s, she was working at a women's clinic in Lebanon, and she was shot and killed by a, a Muslim extremist in that clinic because they were ministering to uh, Muslim women who were dealing with pregnancies, etc. And she really challenged the kids about ministry. And she challenged the kids, you know, is God calling you to be a missionary? Is God calling you to be a pastor? Is God calling you to do full-time ministry? But she didn't sugarcoat it one bit. She was very real with them. Are you willing to sacrifice everything? And these were challenging things for the kids. And I have to admit that that was, for me, the most challenging moment of the life conference. Because at that moment, I had to sit there and pray and deal with God and say, God, yes, I am willing to release my children, thinking about Jake at that time because he was there, that if they want to serve you, I'm willing to give them to you. That's a really hard prayer, isn't it, for a mom or a dad? So the week was full of challenges, and the week was full of really learning and hearing from God. 
And I think the most important thing I shared with the kids while we were there and before we came home was this simple statement. Don't forget in the darkness what you learned in the light. You see, when you go to a conference like that, when these kids went to a conference, you hear them speaking. They were surrounded by Christians. The worship was amazing. The speakers were awesome. Everything was just incredible. You had this moment where all the noise of the world was out of the way. And you had this moment where you could be quiet before God and everything that was being put into you, all the input in your world was positive and was of God. And in that setting, which some people like to call like a greenhouse setting, you hear from God and God speaks to you. And I would challenge you guys who went to the Life Conference, several of you talked to me about some big things in your lives while we were there. Don't forget in the darkness what you learned in the light. Now that we're back home, now that you're back into your regular routine and your friends and school's starting soon and all those things, there's going to be noise, there's going to be these influences and all these things that aren't from God. But we need to hold fast to what God said to us when we were at that conference because that, at that time, God really had your attention. Some people just call that, well, you were just on a high. It's more than that. It's a moment where God has your full attention and he speaks to you. Don't forget what he spoke to you at that conference when you get back into your regular routine. I think that's a challenge for all of us. We all have those moments where we're sitting in a church service or we're reading a Bible or we go to a conference and, oh, and we're so impressed with something that, oh, gosh, I need to do this. Or you come, you come away inspired and then you get back in your life routine and bleh, Right? Don't allow that to happen. Don't forget in the darkness what you learned in the light. As Megan said, too, I thank you for supporting our kids. I kind of figured it out. It was $10,000, wasn't it, to get all the kids there? Uh, and us. Us and the kids. It was just about $10,000. I praise God that he can do something like that through the body of Christ. That's a God-sized thing. More that, Lord, may that be the cry of our hearts and the attitude of our spirit. that We surrender everything we are and everything we have to you. May that shine through us each and every day as we share the love of Christ with others. So as we leave this place, may we go in the strong name of Jesus, empowered by your Holy Spirit, covered in your blood. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Have a blessed day.